Uh, welcome. This is just a, a fairly brief guide to help uh, yourselves and your, your son or daughter at Brunts to make the best decision possible moving forward with their GCC options. So, um, first thing I'd like to say is that there are two possible uh, pathway options available. And these pathway options are based on the latest tracking data and also the Key Stage 2 SATS results. The two pathways are the EBAC pathway and also the Progress 8 pathway. I'm just going to talk about those two pathways a little bit um, over the next couple of minutes. So what is the EBAC all about? It's been mentioned a lot in the media and, and basically what the government are trying to encourage students to do is to study uh, a range of different subjects. So at the moment all students will be studying maths, English and science. They are what we call core subjects. Everybody has to do them. However, what the government would like people to do also is to study a modern foreign language. Now at Brunts we offer German or French. Um, and also humanities subject, geography or history. Now, how important is the EBAC? Well, there's a lot of uncertainty still. But what I would say is that there is an expectation that students who perhaps are going on to sixth form college and university, there is a chance that sixth forms and, u and universities are going to put greater... Um, credence into the EBAC. So there is a chance that a student moving forward may want to apply to university or a, a sixth form college and they may be at a disadvantage because they haven't studied that range of different subjects. It's still very much up in the air at the moment. We do encourage students suitable to study the EBAC pathway to follow it um, but I can't stand here and put my you know, hand on heart say for definite the EBAC is going to disadvantage a student if they don't pursue it. However, it's something to give some serious consideration moving forward. Now, your son or daughter will get um, a, a form, an options form, in the not too distant future. And it'll look something a little bit along these lines. And what they'll have to do is, they will have to select from these option choices um, a number of subjects. So this is an EBAC student. So as you can see here, this is pre-populated, so the student will decide are they going to do history or are they going to do geography. So, for the sake of argument, this particular student is going to study history and they've circled it. Then they've got a choice about in terms of are they going to do French or German. So, they've circled German. Now the little asterisk, and it will, it will say this on the options form, is basically your son or daughter needs to have studied German in year eight to be able to continue into year nine. You can't just simply pick it up in year nine. And then we've got some free choices. So this student may, for example, pick BTEC PE, physical education, and they may also pick performing arts. So you can see there quite a broad and balanced curriculum covering lots and lots of different faculty areas. What I would really encourage your son and daughter to do as well because it was, will make life a lot lot easier moving forward is to also name a reserve choice. I'll do my level best to try and give students their first choice in all of their different options however sometimes it's not always possible. So for an EBAC student yes they do have to a degree a restricted choice however they have still got two free options to pick for example, creative subjects, technology-based subjects, digital-based subjects. Now, the other pathway is the Progress 8 pathway. Now, again, in a similar way to EBAC, they have to study maths, English and science. Right? They're the core subjects. But then they must also pick another, um, what they, the government call academic GCSEs, and that's a choice from history or geography or computer science. Okay, but then they also, and you'll see this on the next slide, have three other option choices available to them. So, if we look on to the next slide, very similar to the EBAC, it will be colour coded, students will be aware of which pathway they have been suggested to go on. So, this particular student, you'll notice this time in the Progress 8 block, we've got history or geography or computer science. So, this student has decided to go down the computer science route. Then they have got three free options. So choosing from this table above, they've gone for music tech, graphic products, performing arts. And their reserve choice 
is creative media. Okay, so that's the progress eight pathway. Things to bear in mind. Well, you, you may be, your son or daughter may be encouraged to follow the progress eight pathway. However, yeah, they can still study a modern foreign language, yeah, if they want to. So they can do that if they want to, which would then actually take them onto the EBAC pathway, but that, that's, that's fine. As I said earlier, um, you know, it is possible, you must have done German in year eight to do it in year nine and pursue it at GCSE, but you can do both languages. We do get some students who do do both languages. Uh, likewise, in the humanities side of things, you know, if a student is on the EBAC pathway and they circle history, well, they can still do geography in one of their free option choices. Um, if your son or daughter is interested in studying um, GCSE music, for example, um, it is a course requirement that they must be able to play an instrument or sing at quite a decent level. Otherwise, they will really, really struggle to do themselves justice at GCSE. Um, a couple of things to bear in mind also. It's not possible for students to do GCSE art and GCSE photography at the same time because of the sheer weight of portfolio, it really would be highly ill-advised to do that. Um, and that's based on, on experience. And finally, and this is largely down to the changes that are occurring with um, the new GCSE in design and technology, it's not possible um, to study, for example, GCSE product design and GCSE graphic products, or textiles and graphic products. You can only do one of the three. And that is a government directive, not a Brunt's directive. So, information and guidance for your son and daughter and yourselves. Well, obviously, the whole process will kick off very, very soon with um, a whole year assembly. We're going to get the, the course descriptions on the website as well. So it's an opportunity for you, your son and your daughter, to have a look at those course descriptions and think if they're, those are the right courses for them moving forward at GCSEs. For subjects that aren't offered at Key Stage 3, but we do offer at GCC, we are going to be doing some sample lessons and students will be contacted. So, subjects like music tech, uh, business studies, health and social care, there will be an opportunity to get a bit of a sample experience before they make their decision, because that's clearly very, very important. They need to be as form informed as much as possible. All right, a lot of work's gonna be done in tutor groups. Tutors are going to be trained and they're going to be advising their tutees as much as possible. Um, by all means, if you want to, if you have a query, contact the tutor. Um, they'll get in contact with you or email you. Right, and finally, as you can see on this, on this slide, we have a timeline of events over the coming next three or four weeks. So, the whole process kicks off on Tuesday the 16th of January with the GCC Option Course Assembly. Um, a lot of information will be given to the students, but at the same time, all the course descriptions will also be available on the website and, of course, also this video that you're currently watching. Um, although this is the initial assembly, there will be further assemblies as well where subject leaders will be coming in to talk to the students about subjects, in particular subjects that they may not do currently at Key Stage 3. Um, on the 22nd of January, the students will receive their option pathway forms. What I mean by that, whether they're Progress 8 or EBAC pathway, as I explained earlier on the video. Thursday the 25th of January is quite an important evening because we have the parents' evening for you to come in to talk about the progress of students in their current subjects, but also to talk to subject staff about whether they will be su suitable to study some of those subjects moving forward into Key Stage 4. I'll also make myself available throughout the evening to talk to any parents who may have queries about Progress 8 and the EBAC pathways. Thursday, on Wednesday the 7th of February, um, we have the final deadline then for the option forms to be handed in to form tutors. I will then go away, collate all the information and set up the option blocks. Throughout this period, we're also going to be offering some sample lessons in subjects such as business, dance, health and social care and music technology because students don't currently study these subjects at Key Stage 3. So it's, again, it's another um, example of the information and guidance being offered to our students to make sure that they make the best decisions for their futures. Thank you. Thank you.